Hello and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at how to cool down polymer presses. Polymer presses are the industrial method of making plastic in Oxygen Not Included. The other big method of making plastic is to ranch glossy Drecos. Uh, but a lot of people go in the polymer press route and uh, a lot of them run into problems. And I've gotten a lot of requests on how to cool down your polymer presses because the polymer press produces a very significant amount of heat, 32,500 DTUs per second. This is more than most buildings that you've kind of encountered to this point in the game uh, will produce in terms of heat. And this is the point at which you begin considering not just the specific heat capacity and the coldness of the coolant that you're using to keep a system cool, but also the thermal conductivity of that coolant. And I think the problem that a lot of players encounter when they begin using the Palmer Press is that they are trying to air cool their systems. And a lot of the gases that you can use to air cool a Palmer Press just don't have the conductivity necessary to, to take out that amount of heat. Uh, if we look at natural gas uh, as an example, it has a thermal conductivity of 0.035, which is pretty terrible. I mean, this is, I mean, zero is perfect insulation. This is getting pretty close to, to perfect insulation. So a lot of gases just don't have the thermal conductivity to really uh, uh, create an effective system for cooling down this much heat. That the problem is not that your coolant isn't uh, enough, it's that your coolant just isn't doing the job fast enough. The heat is being generated by these polymer presses too quickly, and this this is the limiting step. How how fast you can get that heat out. It's not a question of whether or not you can absorb that much heat. It's it's the speed at which you do it. And the really the only trick to the polymer presses is liquid cooling them uh, using a material that has a higher thermal conductivity to keep your polymer presses cool. And I I highly recommend against using gases, even though there are some gases. Uh, that can work with the polymer press because the polymer press will release steam and that might interfere with the process. You also might want to locate your polymer press in a place that has other gases besides whatever this cooling gas is going to be. So there are potentially some issues. If you were to use a gas, something like uh, ethanol would be a very effective one, I think. But the easier solution, probably the most straightforward solution, is simply to take that steam that's coming from the polymer press and let it condense and uh, sit on the ground next to this polymer press and use the water as your means of uh, cooling the system down. Water has a thermal conductivity of 0.609, nearly 20 times that of the natural gas. So it's going to have the thermal conductivity necessary to keep the system cool. And really it's just a matter of then keeping this water cool, right? Here we've designed just such a system. There are a lot of different options for how you can approach this. Once you understand that trick, once you understand that basic idea that you're going to need to have a coolant with a high enough thermal conductivity to get the heat out, uh, there are a lot of different systems you can design. Here I'm showing off one which uses a sort of a, a hot box design. Uh, we have a hot room here. Uh, this room is very hot, right? This is 82 degrees ranging all the way up to uh, 92 degrees here on this end, right? This is a hot room that I have here. And so all the duplicates are entering this room through an airlock and uh, past an Atmos suit checkpoint. So they put on an Atmos suit, they go into this area and they begin working. Well, the big advantages of uh, using Atmos suits in this environment is that um, if you have this environment, even if you cool down this environment such that duplicates can walk through it without getting scalded, because you're probably using just some water on the ground, as your way of providing that thermal connection between the polymer press and whatever your cooling system is. Uh, your duplicates would get a soggy feet debuff every time they ran in here to pick up the plastic or operate some building or do something like that. So there's kind of a double bonus in terms of using the Atmos suits. It allows you to use this sort of hot room approach um, and also prevents them from getting that stress debuff, which depending upon how uh, kind of on top of things you've been with your morale and your stress might be an issue, might not be an issue, varies by base. Uh, I oftentimes in my base uh, have the stress problems under control and I'm kind of interested in just having oxygen in this room and letting duplicates run past here and that requires a little bit more intensive of a system. If you're looking for something easier though, this is a really good answer. And so let's kind of overview how the system is getting its cooling, what it's doing with the outputs and so on and so forth. So first off, we have a source of crude oil. You can imagine this to basically be the oil biome. Uh, I've set the temperature of this crude oil to be 80 degrees, which is kind of on the higher end of what you probably be pumping out from the crude oil biome, but just to show that the system can handle at least up to 80 degrees. Uh, we've shown 80 degrees. Usually like 75 is a little bit more typical, but um, again, it, it varies depending upon your oil biome and how exposed it's been to magma and other heat sources. 
Uh, we have that being pumped up into a liquid reservoir. That liquid reservoir is then feeding into this oil refinery, which needs duplicate operation. And the petroleum is being pumped into another liquid reservoir. And then it follows this chain uh, of going into these uh, polymer presses and uh, this oil, uh, or sorry, this uh, petroleum generator. I'm using the petroleum generator to power the whole thing, so it's a nice little compact uh, setup. That isn't really the most efficient setup, I suppose, right? Because there is the risk that because this oil refinery is being powered by this petroleum generator, that if for whatever reason I just stop operating this oil refinery for a long period of time and ran out of petroleum and ran out of fuel for this petroleum generator, that then I wouldn't have the power to restart this oil refinery, right? So you might want to have an external power source, but this is just a nice compact thing. Um, you can set up the power arrangement however you like. Uh, but one thing to do, you should note, is that a single oil refinery produces five kilograms per second of petroleum, whereas a polymer press uh, only consumes, if I go to an operational one, um, 833 grams per second of petroleum. So you can have a lot of polymer presses per oil refinery if you really want that much plastic. Um, I think a lot of people will choose to get the power out of some of it, um, but it, it varies. Here I have basically four polymer presses and a petroleum generator, kind of striking a balance between all this. You can have fewer polymer presses, you can have more petroleum going to petroleum generators. It's your choice, but the main cooling from the system is simply the crude oil and petroleum itself. Uh, that this is at 80 degrees and these systems don't overheat until they reach 125 degrees, right? Because I've made them out of gold amalgam. And so I'm able to use just this crude oil as the cooling. I have it running through radiant pipes underneath uh, metal tile flooring. And that metal tile flooring is in contact with this water that we need to keep cool. And that's the system. That's the entire cooling system that you need if you use this sort of hot box approach. Um, if you want, or if you want to keep the system colder, um, or if you don't even want to use gold for your polymer presses, you want to use a material that has a lower overheat temperature, you'd want to run a different cooling line through here, right? You'd want to run some sort of cool hydrogen line or something along those uh, sorts. But again, the big key to designing whatever the system is that you're going to design is that you want to have this water here on the ground to improve the thermal conductivity between whatever your cooling system is and these polymer presses. Because otherwise, just, you know, if you're using, especially like natural gas, this thermal conductivity, you would need a huge temperature difference for this thermal conductivity to be sufficient to keep these under their overheat temperature. So uh, that's a big thing to keep in mind. Uh, also added into the system, I have basically all the carbon dioxide going through um, insulated gas pipes. That way, when it reaches this reservoir that I have here, it's roughly at the temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. I like this because this is really good feedstock for molten slicksters. So that's one thing to keep in mind, that the CO2 is coming out at a fairly hot temperature. So if you're trying to keep a molten slickster ranch up and running, um, instead of trying to heat up your carbon dioxide before you feed it to the slicksters, you can just, you know, if you, as long as you make these ducts insulated, um, you can just get that hot carbon dioxide straight from here. It's not much at the end of the day. Again, one of these is only producing 8.3 grams per second of carbon dioxide, not very much at all. Um, but just keep in mind, this is perhaps a resource you wanna preserve. Also, because I have located my oil refinery within this room as well, it also benefits from the cooling uh, that these uh, metal tile slash water setup uh, provides, and also is something that's kind of nice to have in a, uh, an atmosphere area because it produces a ton of natural gas, which is not breathable by duplicants, right? It kind of makes sense to put this in the same room as these polymer presses. Um, because I have this in here, I'm also producing natural gas, and uh, I'm occasionally pumping out this natural gas using a gas pump. I've hooked this gas pump up to an Atmos sensor, basically saying if you are above 750 grams, then go ahead and pump some out. So occasionally we're seeing some natural gas come out of the system, right? Uh, really the only reason for this Atmos sensor is to get a little bit more cooling out of this natural gas before it leaves the room, right? Have it be in some thermal contact with uh, the polymer press in the water and get a little bit more cooling that way, right? It can absorb some heat for me as well. But also just, I don't wanna be running this gas pump all the time because this oil refinery is only uh, emitting 90 grams per second of natural gas. This gas pump will handle 500 grams per second of natural gas. If I were to run this all the time, I'd be using a lot of power to basically keep a room vacuumed. So a little Atmos sensor here helps a lot. Also have this liquid pump. This is uh, basically just to make sure this water level from the condensing steam from these polymer presses doesn't reach a point where the polymer presses become submerged and then can't operate. So we have a little hydro sensor here that says if you're above 45 kilograms, 
uh, then go ahead and turn on this pump and pump a little bit of the water out. I think at 50 kilograms is when these buildings become submerged and no longer operate, so um, that's something to keep in mind. You can't have tons of water or whatever your coolant is over these areas. You just need a little bit, which is perfectly fine. Usually the steam generated by these polymer presses is more than enough. Um, you can have like a little bottle empty or just empty out one bottle into this area. It doesn't have to be much. Just looking for that thermal conductivity is all you're really looking for here. Uh, but this liquid pump, you know, it will turn on in a million years to occasionally pump out a little bit of water out of the system. And I'm just having it go to a liquid reservoir. So you do want to handle the outputs of this stuff, right? The natural gas coming from this oil refinery, um, the excess petroleum that you might have out of the system, which I'm just using to, you know, run a petroleum generator uh, off in the distance somewhere. Um, you do kind of want to handle the rest of the outputs, but the cooling itself, I want to emphasize the main trick to it. And the main reason I think a lot of people struggle with it is just that thermal conductivity. And if you just allow a little bit of liquid uh, to lie on the floor by these polymer presses, that's going to be sufficient. Um, other than that, if you really wanted to gas cool the system, I recommend a lot of temp shift plates and a high conductivity um, the gas, right? Ethanol is the best one. Hydrogen is not too bad either. And if you keep that cold enough, then you can, can work with that system. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the main trick again is the thermal conductivity. This is a nice enclosed system. I'll just show sort of all the, um, the relevant overlays here, right? Oil coming in from some oil biome somewhere, petroleum going through here, the petroleum's going through our metal tile to make sure that everything remains cool. Uh, I've got my gases all flowing out somewhere. Um, power wise, right, I just, in this case, I have a petroleum generator powering everything and that's where the excess petroleum from this oil refinery is going, right? Everything is hooked up on this one system. Um, that's basically it. Pretty simple system, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, something like this works just great. Again, you might need not have Atmos suits, you might have other needs, um, but as long as you remember this one trick about putting a little bit of water on the floor just to get the thermal conductivity that you want, then you should be good to go. All right, that's it for this episode, and I'll catch you guys next time.